It's a little after seven, so we'll get going here. We have I'll a quorum. Try call, I'll try to call Tim Scott, okay? Okay. Tim Allen. Oh, yeah. uh, good, evening, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Town of Rhinebeck uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for uh, April 21st, 2021. Uh, before I begin the meeting, I do have to read a little preamble here to allow us to uh, do this uh, meeting virtually. Uh, and it goes as follows. Uh, this is uh, our opening statement. Uh, I have confirmed with the ZBA Council that tonight's meeting has been convened in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 202.1, which suspends certain provisions of the Open Meetings Law to allow a municipal board to convene a meeting uh, via video conferencing and the Governor's Executive Order 202.101, which extends such a uh, suspension until May 6th, 2021. Uh, as such, there's no in-person meeting for the ZBA, and this meeting is being conducted via Zoom video conferencing. Uh, in accordance with these executive orders, the public has been provided with the ability to view tonight's public uh, meeting via Zoom or to watch a live stream of the meeting on the town's webpage. Uh, in further accordance with the executive order, a transcript will be made at a later date. Uh, the meeting's agenda has been duly noticed on the town's webpage, which uh, notice was accompanied by information as to how to access and view this meeting. And with that, I'm just going to take a roll call uh, to make sure we have a quorum. Uh, Tim Economopoli. Here. Catherine Clark. Here. And I am also present. So we have three of, of five. We have a quorum and uh, we can uh, commence the agenda. Um, did everybody have an opportunity to take a look at the, uh, the meeting minutes that were um, uh, sent out? I and did. then I think uh, Tim uh, Allenbrook uh, made a couple of minor edits on it. Everybody have a chance to take a look at them? Yep. Any concerns, questions, comments, corrections? Not for me. Yeah, uh, but they're pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay, uh, at this time I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, uh, meeting uh, minutes uh, for the uh, last meeting uh, of March. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, and uh, Tim Economopoli? Yes. Catherine Clark? Yes. And me? Yes. All right, um, so that brings us to the beginning of our um, meeting, really. And the first case that's on under new business is uh, Catherine Whitman and um, Ms. Whitman is here with us this evening, I see. You're gonna have to unmute. Yes. Okay, we can hear you, good. Um, we, um, uh, just to recap, we had some issues as to um, some measurements uh, for certain, uh, I think it was side yard setbacks uh, in the original application uh, there has been, and I want to thank uh, uh, John Lyons and uh, Kim Garrison, and also especially uh, Jim uh, Levy uh, for, I think, straightening out uh, the application. Uh, there has been a new uh, a denial letter, letter dated April 21st, 2021, setting forth uh, the new measurements uh, for variance, which includes a front yard setback and uh, side yard setbacks. Um, so I, I guess I, I, I did confirm with Jim the, the building coverage um, is the same as the determination letter um, from March 29th. Um, it's just that the the April 21st letter was just to um, correct the side yard setback. So it is still four variances, front yard, right. two side yards and the building coverage. And, and for the record, uh, the front yard uh, setback, the requirement is 150 feet, proposed is 56 feet, five inches for a variance request of 93 uh, feet, seven inches. Um, the uh, north side uh, side yard setback uh, requirement is 100 feet, proposed is 25, uh, uh, 2 point, 25 feet, 2.5 inches for a variance requested of 74 feet, nine uh, and a half feet. Uh, 74 feet, nine and a half inches, excuse me. And then there's a side yard setback on the south side. Again, the requirements 100 feet. Proposed is uh, 23 feet, three inches. Uh, variance requested is 79, excuse me, 71 feet, three inches. 
And then there's the allowable building uh, coverage, 7% uh, of the uh, lot area. The requirement is uh, 1,163 square feet. Proposed is 1,770.75 square feet for a uh, area variance request of uh, 607.75 uh, square feet. Does that sound about right? Yes, there yeah. was, um, the front yard is um, 55, not 56. Okay. Because there's like a little step that's out in front. So that's where that 55 came from. I can put on, uh, I shared with the board uh, this, this afternoon a map. Would it help to put that up? Or sure, the board yeah. or why not, just, just for, because I know that's what you refer to. This is the uh, application, hold on. Um, and just a quick question, the um, uh, building coverage includes the garage, that 1,700 square feet? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question. Some place, I think it was today, I read that I would need to, to get a variance for the existing non-compliant garage and driveway. I'm not sure where I read that. I, I don't want to make more difficulty, but I don't want it to come up later and then slow things down further. D uh, Catherine, do you know where you heard that from? Um, no, I was just rereading the letter that came in this evening from um, Mr. Levy, but it wasn't there. No. Um, yeah, because I, I so, wouldn't think that the they should fall under the building coverage, but if they're existing... And they haven't been torn down or anything, correct? The, the no, I know where it was. I got notes from the planning board meeting that I attended on Monday night. <clears throat> I think it was in those notes. Um, I, I haven't heard anything. I, I did speak to Jim Levy uh, yesterday and he which was after the planning board meeting he didn't mention it so um for the board jim levy is the acting zo for the time um just on a temporary basis um so um uh, if you have any more information about that catherine if you could send it along to chris um, yep he, i can forward it now if that would speed anything up i could just forward it um let me do that and do you well, want an email of it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, well, I guess it, I don't know if Chris has access to email. I, I'll let Chris. Uh, okay. That, but I do. Yes. Okay. We might not be able to address it right here. Okay. But, you know, just it depends on how right. complicated it is. But, um, but anyway, I'll just fill the board in what I um, what I discussed with Jim. So. Um, Anyway, Jim and I, we both looked at this map and, you know, Jim had been at the planning board meeting because he's the planning consultant. So we just kind of discussed the placement and we measured the variances based on the math. So that's what we had agreed upon. This, these were um, pretty close to what um, Ms. Whitman had provided in her application um, materials. Um, so anyway, this just kind of, this is just a map that I kind of did. The blue lines represent where the setbacks for the RA-10 go. So you can just see that the lot is very um, substandard in here. That's just how it was, um, how it's currently created. But so this line, I think you can see my mouse. This line would be the front yard setback, setback 150 feet. And this is the front of the building. So it's measured at 55.5 um, and then the side yard setbacks really almost don't even go off of the uh, the property line, so they're that's why those are needed. So this line is measured from the south line, the south border line, um, and then this blue line at the bottom is is 100 feet from the northern border line. So you can just see how variances are pretty much always going to be required for this, and the house is designed, it's a little bit bigger than, uh, and Catherine, um, Ms. Whitman, you can uh, correct me, but it's a little bit bigger than what was there, but it's pretty close to what where the foundation of the original house was located, a slight, mm -hmm. slight um, increase to it. Right. 
What is the increase? I mean, can you give us an idea? Um, yeah. I know it's small, it, but. It was this little, um, I don't know the square footage, but this bump out here. Is that where, this, um, this one right here? The... Yes, on the north side. Then the entry bump out right on the uh, west side. And just. I believe I extended the back portion back another two or three feet from what back, um, sorry, the east side where the fireplace chimney shown here, uh, near the rear setback line. Okay. Right here? Yeah, oh. just a couple more feet. I might have been two or three feet further than the old building went back. So the overall increase in the footprint of the first floor isn't really very much. The primary increase is that you added the second floor. Is that right? Right. I mean, in terms of overall square footage. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I had a quick question, and I, I think I know the answer, but I just want to make sure I'm getting it clear. There are two illustrations of what you're going to build. Um, I assume what you proposed to, to uh, Kim, I don't know if you have that up there. Um, yeah, it, the the um, bottom rendering, is that uh -huh. is that the proposed building? Because there was another one somewhere in some of the documentation. I just wanted to make sure that this is what we're considering. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Yeah, the top was what was there originally, and then the bottom is what is proposed. Right, but the, there was another, and I'm... Uh... Well, in the original proposal, the, the left side with the elevated part was kind of the same, but the second right. story on the right side was not there, I think. Right. There was the right side was still the same ranch that you right. can see above. It was yeah. just made new siding and new windows, but it was the same shape right. as the ranch above. Okay. And, and that's been scrapped. It's definitely going to be what we see here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kim and John, as far as uh, an amendment to the uh, the application, I mean, can that be done on the fly here? Because I, I know some of these numbers aren't that far off, but at least we have accurate numbers, it looks like. Um, how do we go about uh, amending the application so we, we don't have to go back and go through the paperwork again and all that kind of stuff and we can move forward? John, do you want to take this or do you? Sure. Uh, so I think in the past, the way when there have been small deviations like this, we've allowed an amendment on the fly uh, so that the applicant does not have to start over again. We'll have to, um, I, you know, I don't understand about the, you know, the garage and the driveway. So obviously uh, we'll have to check that independently. But with regard to these measurements, I think that we can deem them uh, uh, deem them changed to meet the the measurements that Kim uh, calculated, and then uh, it's it'll we'll put we can put Kim's map in the file, and it'll be there for any member of the mm -hmm. public who wants to look at the file in advance of the public hearing, and they'll be able to see that. Plus, we have the new yeah. we have the new determination letter yeah. um, from from Jim, which uh, you know sets forth the what we believe to be the accurate uh, measurements. So we'll adopt those as, as the application. Yep. One question on the garage on the driveway. Um, it, I sent the notes from the planning board meeting and just to note that the old plan got approval without those elements being brought into it. They were existing non-compliant and no variances were needed when I applied last year. Okay, well, we'll have to do, we'll have to understand the situation uh, and, you know, and then figure out 
you know, how that impacts the application. But, okay. but we could accept the application pending that clarification, do you think? Yes. 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 And yeah. I mean, it's possible that, I don't know. I, I don't know how understanding that, may, I, I think that understanding that may not change things, but for now, to keep things going, you can um, accept the application subject to the changes um, that were made. And and we actually, Kim put a fair amount of effort into uh, over the last couple of days trying to get that squared away so that this would we would be in a position to be able to move this forward without the applicant having it, you know, you know put in a renewal or with, you know, without right. the board having to be in a position to not accept the application as complete again tonight so um do do we have elevations of all four sides of the house um i think it was just the uh, i'll pull up the screen again Hold on. oh did i close out of no i didn't did I? Uh, miss miss whitman did you provide no, no i didn't submit all four no i only submitted that to the planning board uh could, could you share those with us too? I mean, after the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. I just want to see where the windows and things are. Okay. Um, any other questions, concerns about the application? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna make a motion that we accept the application uh, subject to whatever situation uh, may or may not uh, exist with regard to the, uh, the, the, the planning board and uh, the garage and, and, and possibly other structures. Um, and I don't know, as part of that motion, I have to uh, make a uh, application to amend the original application to adopt the numbers uh, in the April 21st denial letter, but yes, to be safe, I'm going to that. do that as well. That'll be part of the motion that uh, we, if we accept the application as amended uh, and uh, it'll be in conformity with the numbers set forth in the April 21st letter from Jim Levy. Um, and there are four variances as I outlined. And uh, it's also subject to uh, the additional uh, information that Catherine uh, requested that has been supplied to the, the elevations. I think I covered everything, if I haven't. Okay. That sounds, that sounds good. Second. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, Tim Economopoli? Yes. Catherine Clark? Yes. Tim Allenbrook? You're muted. Tim, frozen. you're frozen. Well, I say yes, and that's a quorum. So um, <laughs> hopefully Tim will get back to us. Um, uh, Ms. Whitman, the next uh, meeting is uh, May 19th. And um, I'm going to make a motion that we schedule a public hearing on this application uh, for May uh, 19th. Is that an acceptable date to, uh, for you? Can you make it on that day? Yes. OK. Um, let's see, that as far as I can tell, it looks like, uh, according to my cheat sheet here, uh, supplied by Kim, that uh, the planning board has already uh, taken um, lead agency status as far as the secret determination. Yes, they, uh, okay. with, uh, Catherine mentioned was at the Monday meeting, so I'm sure that they'll be doing um, seeker for that. More than happy to, uh, to defer to them. And then um, we need uh, referrals just to the planning board and the um, uh, the WAC and uh, the CAB. Any yeah. other? Okay. No, that, that should be it. All right. Um, who would like to do this application? <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Hearing, hearing no uh, volunteers, I'll take it. Uh, Kim, John, anything else on this application? No, I think you're good. I think we're good. I agree. All right, Ms. Whitman, we'll see you on um, on the 16th of May. Uh, 19th, right? Or 19th, I'm sorry, 19th of May. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Bye. All right. Uh, next up is uh, the um, Shapiro application. And I see we have the Shapiros here. Okay, you folks are muted. Can you unmute? Yeah. Hey. There you are. Have you ever been through the process before? No. Okay, very simple, very relaxed. Um, we've looked at your application, uh, but we still need you to just explain to us uh, what you wanna do. And um, what we're doing right now is we're really just evaluating, uh, do we have enough information uh, to accept the application so we can meaningfully uh, consider your request for the, uh, the two variances that, uh, uh, that you're requesting. So uh, in your own words, if you could just tell us uh, what you're doing and uh, why you need the variances. So as, uh, as we understand it, there are two places in the drawings that go over the edge of the line that's proper. So one is up, oh, you can't see my thing, sorry. One is on the north side and one is on the west side. Um, and our neighbors have, we've just spoken to them and we've made changes to plans according to their <coughs> preferences. And Catherine Clark has very intimate knowledge of this property because she's the one who originally negotiated this particular line <laughs> and why it goes in an angle like that. <laughs> So if I could just add, so uh, what Lisa and I wanted to do is we had a, a kind of a, wanted to do a, a sort of landscape master plan for our property. And so this past year, uh, uh, we worked with the landscape architects in Hudson and we uh, uh, upgraded some of the plantings and various elements and uh, for the second phase, uh, we wanted to put in a, a discrete lap pool. And so that's what we're here to discuss with you today. Okay. And Stephen is here and so is Eli. They're both on the call. Hello. 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 Would you like Scott, to- I, I, I could take lead on this at, at any point with um, specific okay. questions. Well, yeah, well, why don't you, uh, kind of go through the, the process as well. I didn't realize that, Steve, that you were on this, so. Yeah, no um, problem. Um, so uh, essentially the, the property has some, some, some characteristics to it, some more so historical characteristics that have been there for years. Um, so down, down in the, the east part of the property, right? Yeah, that we have the, the garden and then you go north from the garden, we, we have essentially a, a flower garden. So there's like this English garden thing that's happening. You know, that that's all a lower level of the property that you know, it really shouldn't be disturbed. Um, mm -hmm. It's got great view sight from the road. So when you're driving past, you get to see the beauty to, to that part of the, of the lot. Um, so at the end of the day, where we're putting the pool is more so a rocky hillside. There's nothing else you can do. You can't really plant on it. You can't, you know, the kids can't play on it. You're not hanging out in a lounge chair on it, enjoying the view. So, you know, we've figured that's the best place to put the pool because it's unusable space. Um, the pool, if you look into uh, Wagner Hoskins drawings, they have a uh, 3D on their plan set, um, kind of like a colored image of what our intent is for what could be potentially seen from the road view. So the, the pool itself, yeah, the next one, boom. So the pool itself, when you're coming down the road and looking at the, looking at the property, what you'll see is a, a four feet of natural stone rock wall. And the stone that we're gonna use is indigenous to the property. It's gonna be a blue stone, a New, a New York blue stone kind of stacked ledge. Um, that's that's close to resembling the stack ledge that's already on the property. Um, and so you're really not seeing a swimming pool. You're not necessarily seeing a fence because what we're doing is we're gonna have four feet minimum of pool wall exposed and veneered that's gonna act as our barrier to be New York State compliant. And then on the upper side of the pool where we need a fence, we're going to be using a a slatted style cedar fence. So there are these inch and a half cedar slats with about a, a three eighths inch, half inch gap in between each slat. You know, cedar is, is commonly found in the area. The bluestone we're using 
commonly found in the area. So we're, we're trying to stay true to the roots here and, and have something that blends in beautifully and isn't an eyesore and allows my client to be able to enhance their, their stay at the residence and, you know, get some more enjoyment in Rhinebeck. Now, I'm, I'm probably asking a silly question. The view that's shown here is that that that's that's the backyard, right? It's a, it, it, are you actually going to be able to see any of this from the from the roadway? Very unlikely. We have we have some um, some aerials, some GIS uh, pictures from Google Earth that we threw in here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's you will I think you will be able to see a little bit of it, but you're you're only going to be seeing rock wall for what you can see. Right. OK. Yeah, it just looks like, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff in, in, in between the roadway and uh, in, in the pool. Sure, so. but like say in the wintertime, if we're going to take yeah. it all the way, let's take it all the way. You know, that line of sight is going to be there at some point. And right. what we're going to be presenting in that site is going to be something that's not going to catch your eye. But if you are looking, it's going to look like it belongs. Right. Okay. And uh, Scott, I, I know the applicants mentioned um, Catherine. So, um, so Catherine, I don't know if you want to just explain a little bit, but um, Catherine had mentioned that um, she was the previous owner um, of this property several years ago and sold it to the Shapiros. Um, <laughs> Catherine did reach out to us to see if there was any conflict of interest. Um, there's, there, there's really not um, because, it, you know, there's no contract currently this was done several years ago i but anyway catherine if you want to address anything um john and i did um, look into it we don't see there's any conflict at all so catherine doesn't have to recuse herself but i don't know if catherine you want to say anything in addition to um to that no no i just thought it, it should be known that we used to own this property and uh we also used to own the property adjoining it and so lisa's correct we did do the lot line change that um, resulted in the in the current lot line, um, and um, so there were various reasons for that. But yes, that we were responsible for doing the lot line change, um, and so I am pretty familiar with the property. Um, I was looking for the the uh, illustration that showed where the set. What are the the setbacks uh, requirements are to the pool itself where you need the variance or is it the patio and the pool? Um, if I, this was another question that I, when I was speaking to Jim yesterday, I asked him about. Um, I actually, in my opinion, it actually should be to where the filters and the propane tanks are because they are part of the swimming pool and from the definition of the Rhinebeck um, accessory structure definition, um, which is like a, you know, a static construction on a fixed location and a swimming pool is considered an accessory structure. And again, these are integral components of that swimming pool. Um, I think it should actually be measured from the um, pool filter and equipment area on the, um, on the west side. On the side. I, again, I didn't have a full scale map for this one. I estimated it from my measurements about 48, but perhaps the applicants or Steve could provide an actual measurement to that, to those areas. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Um, um, it's, just, it's just, it's it's strange that you bring it up, Kim, and, and you know, you're, you guys are the bosses, but, in all my years, I've been doing this, you know, 15 years now, and every single town, even down in Westchester, where they get nitty gritty, it's it's always been to the water's edge of the pool from the property line. You know, they, they would have certain certain things like for the gas, the boiler, like the gas fired heater, um, they would act use that kind of look at that like a generator and have and that would follow the generator setbacks. Same thing with the propane tanks and follow those setbacks, you know. Yeah, we did look it's, into that because Rhinebeck does also exempt um, certain structures, but it didn't really seem like this, um, this these fell into those categories because like even for generators, um, it's for generators for emergency purposes. So again, it, it, 
I, I did look into those um, exemptions to see to see if, if it really did go to to the patio. But um, again, in my reading, I didn't see it. And I think it's just a safer assumption to go from there just so that you and the property owners are getting the proper variances for it. We don't think it should necessarily impact the um, balancing of factors, but we just want to make sure that we're giving you the correct spacing that that you're asking for. Is, is there a reasonable guesstimate uh, uh, as to how that will change the uh, the rear and the side yard setbacks that are being requested? It Any... didn't change the rear yard because that is to the pool. Yeah. It would it would adjust the side yard. And again, the determination letter had it at 53. 0.33. Um, right. And again, from my um, measurement, again, I didn't have a full scale map, so I couldn't really make sure it was to scale, but I, I estimated around 48. So it's, it's we're not, talking five feet. Yeah. And again, but if, if Steve could just confirm that um, so that we can make sure that the public hearing notice is accurate. Yeah, do you want me to do that right now? Yes. Uh, if, if you, yeah, if you can. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and, and to me, I think it is safer and it's negligible. I mean, it, there, there's really, you know, five feet, it's not, it doesn't change the nature to me. It's not a dramatic change. Uh, but while we are uh, talking about the filters and the tanks, um, I, it looks like they're going to be outside of the fence area. Uh, could you just, is there any landscaping that's planned to kind of buffer it from uh, neighbors or can you address that a little bit more? Eli. Yeah, um, so if you look at um, our set that we sent out, um, if you look at the pool lighting plan, probably is the best example. Tell me, I, I kind oh, of it's, um, so L, have to... L400. Oh, great. You can see here that we're adding um, a bunch of nor uh, evergreen trees, probably 16 to uh, 14 feet, depending on where on the slope they're going to end up. Oh, and see. that will be screening the, the locations of the propane tanks and pool equipment. And the, then the, the lighting appears to me to go up quite a ways to the north. Is that, is that lighting plan still the same? I was curious about what changes were made to the plan after your discussion with your neighbors. Well, that, that we did make a change in the lighting plan when we uh, when we had earlier discussions um, regarding um, making sure that we didn't we're using up lights to uplight those trees. So what you're seeing now are actually moonlights. Um, so they'll be shooting down from inside the tree, so not providing any glare. And um, they would be pointed obviously away from neighbor windows and neighbor sight lines. So there's, uh, so I'm sorry, I'm just not familiar with moonlight. So what is, uh, uh, sure. If you go down, uh, I think it is sheet number five L five o two. Okay. Oh. So uh, detail number three is showing what the moonlight would look like and the strap that would attach to the tree. So this would be um, just these would be attached to the tree. There would be a running a low voltage line and they would be pointed to amplify the branch structure to create shade onto the client's patio deck. So when they're out there at night, it creates some uh, visual interest. Um, and, but like I said, they're completely adjustable and focusable. So they would be focused away from neighbors' sight lines and obviously uh, away from any roadway um, sight lines as well. Okay, so they're, they're actually attached to these evergreens that you're putting in there? No, these will actually be attached to um, some ornamental trees that we'll be putting in the foreground on the pool side of the fence. Okay. So there'll actually be trees surrounding these lights actually, so there'll be even more coverage blocking it from surrounding neighbors. Okay. And then you're adding some evergreens to the north as well, or those are existing evergreens? Those are existing. Um, so if you look at our plan, sorry uh, about the this one. So the trees that have a plus sign are ones we're adding. Trees that have a circle are ones okay. that are already existing. So you can see that we're adding five uh, 
five evergreen trees to screen that property with that will already contribute to an existing evergreen screen um, down the slope. And then you have something planted on the uh, north side of the fence too, to sort of screen the fence. And then I guess you're thinking that the evergreens themselves screen a lot of the-, the Yeah, so if you go to the L100 plan actually, Mm -hmm. um, you can see uh, right on the north side of the fence that we're calling out that we're going to be screening that as well with some additional sweet pepper bush plants, which are a nice tall deciduous shrub um, that flowers and has a nice scent as well. Okay. You got it surrounded. We, it, it's about privacy and making sure everyone's comfortable. Yep. In response to your question about um, feedback from the neighbors, what the pool equipment was, was originally um, on the north side of the fencing. And oh. Ended up moving it to the side because they said they thought it might be too noisy up there. So that's why the pool equipment is there on that, on the left side, as opposed to above the pool equipment. Uh, so there's no uh, there's no structure being required or built for the pool equipment itself for any for the filter or or it'll have some wall, it'll have a small fence around it basically okay oh there it is there it is it's here. they just put it up on, I mean Stephen can explain better than I can right yeah, I mean I mean the 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 equipment is all beige. It's um it's built to be outside. It's better to be outside because it doesn't create a place for rodents to live and fester. Um, but um, there, you know, between Eli and the Shapiro's, some some screening, whether it's just some you know horizontal boards or maybe we use a, a couple um, pieces of the fence to to kind of put an L around it to to block it from view. Um, that's that's all subjective. Right. Right. Okay. Same thing with the propane tanks, you know, obviously, you know, the client doesn't want to see them and we don't want the neighbors to see them. You know, we're, we're looking to keep, keep the neighborhood as happy as possible. And in, in the same condition that you find it in now and, and not really impede on anybody's, um, you know, whatever it is. Sorry. Yeah. I, I know I'm asking for, uh, from, uh, for hearsay, uh, but I may have presumed that the, uh, the neighbors are, um, in favor of this or, or, or happy with the changes that were made at, at their suggestion? Yes, they're very happy. They've been great. Okay. They were glad we were so responsive. We always, by the way, we always like to have uh, neighbor input and, and they will be, you know, for the public hearing, they'll be notified and everything else. So um, we always like to get input from the neighbors. It's, it's very important to us. So um, I just throw that out there. And I did, um, your um, are are all the crab apple trees coming out? Do they all need to come out for this? No, so, we can't uh, pull them in there still. They're, they're what, Lisa? I'm oh, sorry. Keeping a few of them in there. Uh huh. I can't tell which ones. Are up in that right, right. Well, I wouldn't remember exactly either. But um, uh, and then I think I read some, saw somewhere um, there were some other trees that were going to be removed. There's not really any other big trees up that way, so. Uh, yeah, if you go to the first sheet. Um, oh, the first sheet. I thought L that was the, okay. I'm sorry, L what? Um, L1, what is it? L001, so it's the second sheet in that package. Um, we are not removing any trees. All the tree removal that was happening on the property has already occurred um, when we were doing some earlier landscape work. Mm -hmm. um, what we are doing is showing that we are going to be relocating one of the large shrubs and we're making sure that we put tree protection up around the existing trees um, that we want to make sure are kept for uh, maintaining the, the screen fullness um, during the pool build. Uh, is this uh, staked out, uh, the pool and, and the general area where the uh, pool equipment's going to be? And if it, if it isn't, at some point in time, we, we, we would like that just so we can, when we go out and do a, um, a site visit, we have a general area idea of where things are going to be and that kind of stuff. 
It doesn't have to be elaborate. Just give us a general idea of where the pool is going to be and uh, it, where the equipment's going to be. Very easy to get it all staked out for you, Scott. Yeah. And, and again, it's not an immediate thing. It's just, you know, we go out and do the site inspection. So at some point down the road, that, that'd be great. Yep. Um, no um, Kim, to answer your question with the setbacks on the tank and the filter equipment, yes. the tanks from it, it's, I'm still unsure of what's actually the, uh, the, the rear, the rear yard with those angles coming off on the, on the West side there. Um, mm -hmm. But from, from the first angle going north to west, um, we're, we're roughly 25, 30 feet, call it, with the propane tanks from that line at the closest point. And from the west, on the west side, the, the side, west side yard line, we're 40 feet. Uh, filter equipment is showing at 45 feet from the side yard. Yeah, I think that, see like on this uh, map here, like how you have this like the 63 i think that's like i think that this would be the line that you're measuring from so got it so where i'm measuring the 63 that's actually rear oh this is the rear is well, that well that's that's what i'm trying to define yeah, yeah. i think that this oh, is this the rear i think yeah, I, would, I, 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 I see I, I see what you're saying it's it's that, that's why i pulled multiple measurements from yeah. you know what i yeah. mean i mean i think if you know, if you ignore that little corner, I think I would take the side from, you know, that. Yeah, uh, I would take the side here. From there. To here. Right. So from the from, from the side there, you're at you're at 40 feet for the propane tanks and 45 for the filter. So since they're kind of all part of the pool, I would think that uh, we'll just say that's um, a variance of uh, 40 feet setback for the propane because just again considering that that's the closest area. Okay and, and do we do we need to change our submission on our end or is that something that can just be typed on yours? We I think we can amend it on ours. Okay yeah, we'll, we'll um, yeah because we'll um, we'll amend it um, and we'll we'll just just as we did for, for Miss Whitman, we'll just make a motion to uh, include that amendment in our decision. And that, that's crazy. Just one more question, because essentially the pool equipment, and, and I just want to understand the law as it's read and as it's understood by the town, but like when these propane tanks get dropped, they're set on cinder blocks. It's, it's not a permanent structure. You know what I mean? Although there's a line that's ran in the ground and connected, at not one point in time is it permanent. And same thing with the filter equipment. Anything can be unhooked and removed. There's no footing. There's no foundation. There's there's nothing like that that's going to keep it in the ground and cause major destruction in removing that equipment. So I, I just, again, I'm not trying to argue with you. That's not my intent. No, it's just I, to I better understand, understand the angles at which we're, you know, trying to abide. So the way that, that a, the way that a structure is defined is it's um, a static construction or assembly or materials uh, of, which requires a fixed location or an attachment to an object that has a fixed location. So again, because to, in my opinion, it's part of the pool, it needs to be part of the functioning of the swimming pool and a swimming pool is listed as an accessory structure. It's part the that's why I would consider this to be part of the swimming pool structure. Okay. Got it. And again, we're it, not trying to impact you. We're actually trying to make sure that we're giving you the variance that you need it. So yeah. we just want to make sure that we're giving you, you know, if, if it needs to be closer than what was suggested or further away, that that's why. But um, Scott, I know, and Catherine, you were trying to say something, so I'll let you. I just, you know, Stephen, I, I understand your argument and, and, you know, reasonable minds can differ over interpretations. Um, I'm an attorney, so, you know, reasonable <laughs> minds can differ and, and, uh, and I understand your argument. Um, I, I don't feel that it's going to impact the application in any way. And I think it does safeguard you. It's, it's a safer way to go. So. Right. Again, it's uh, just, it's, it's not so much an argument. I don't like using that word. It's just, it's just trying no, no, no. to really understand. So next time when I go to do this, you know, I, I'm just giving the information right up front. I'm, I'm not trying to interpret it myself. I'm, I'm looking at it through your eyes and, and you know, making it easier for the next time around. 
I can double check, but again, I, I had, because I remember that Rhinebeck had something about generators and stuff, so I did look at it. I'll double check again, um, but it's good to have these measurements and I'll update the board if, if I change, you know, any suggestions, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll double check what it says about generators and, and yeah. you know, any exemptions. Yeah, it, yeah and, and that, that, that goes back I'm, to... I'm yeah, quite sorry. confident that we're correct about this. And this... Uh, this interpretation of structure has been consistently applied in this way in Rhinebeck in other applications. Um, uh, I, I understand that Steve may have had other experiences in other municipalities, but we just are bound to go by uh, the definition of structure that's set forth in, uh, in the zoning law. So I, I think it's better, honestly, uh, to just amend the application tonight to these measurements um, so that we can go forward and there's no time lost, um, you know, set a public hearing based on these measurements, uh, amend the application and keep moving. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, any uh, comments, uh, concerns, questions from uh, any of the board members? No. Either of the two Tims who have, I haven't heard from? No. Uh, I'm afraid this is Tim A here. I just managed to get logged in about 10 minutes ago, so I missed about half of this presentation. So I will just um, abstain from. Do you have any okay. questions, Tim? No, yeah. no, it, 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 looks, it looks pretty good. It's a yay, it's Tim, it's a yay. It's a very complete application, I mean. Yeah. And, um, that is my uh, opinion as well, that it's a very complete uh, application. And um, uh, because I think it is, I'm going to make a motion that we accept the application subject to um, the change uh, in the request for the side yard uh, uh, setback, which um, originally is proposed as 53.33 uh, feet. And it sounds like it should be more like, we're gonna have to firm up the numbers, but. 40. 40 to 45, 40 feet? 40, because he said the 40 was to the propane and the 45 was to the filter. So we're looking for a variance request instead of 21.67, it's more like 35, something in that range. Yep. Okay. Uh, you heard that our uh, next meeting is on May 19th. Um, that's when we would set up the public hearing. Well, first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, all right, I'm gonna make a motion that uh, we accept the application subject to that uh, change in the side yard setback uh, request. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Tim Econopoli. Yes. Tim Allenbrook. Um, should I, since I missed part of it, should I? It's up to you. I'm, I'm fine with it with a yay. Okay. A yay here and Catherine? Yes. All right. So uh, we've accepted the application uh, and what we're gonna do is put it on for a public hearing. Uh, that'll be May 19th, if I recall correctly. And um, your, the neighbors will be uh, informed about uh, the application and be given an opportunity to attend the meeting and uh, ask questions, uh, voice concerns, uh, voice um, opinions for, against, whatever. And, um, um, and, and, th and that's what happens. And Steve, I'm sure you know about that. And, and Eli, you've been through this process before, so um, you can tell your clients about it. But it's, it's basically the same thing, just going through the application and your, your neighbors and other interested people have an opportunity to come in and, and, and say what they want to say. And we do like to have the neighbor input if, 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 if possible. So uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, again, you guys can make it that day. Mate, I, I yeah. see the Shapiro's I'm nodding. I'm there. You're there? Okay. okay. Um, okay, and then uh, Scott, Chris is going to be emailing me or the Shapiro's, probably me, but over the list of neighbors that the letters need to go out to and the letter that goes out to the list of neighbors and make a board and all that stuff. Do we do all that for this? Yes. Yes. Once I get confirmation on the side, your setback measurements from Tim, um, I will have that information for you in the next few days. Okay. And we're doing a two by three laminated display put out front of the house showing for the public hearing, all that, right? Yeah. Full nine. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah, Perfect. And, I'll and, have and, the directions right on the email. Great. As well, so if you have any questions though, don't hesitate to call me. 
Okay, you and, got it. And, and stakes at some point down the road, just so we have an idea of where it is and and that kind of stuff when we stakes go stakes and string and all kinds of fun stuff. Yep. Yeah, Dude, I mean it doesn't have to be elaborate, but just give us a general idea. And just okay. and I for where the pool is, and then probably the fence, and then I think we can extrapolate everything else. Okay, that's easy enough. All right. Oh, and uh, before the applicant goes, are you, um, I think you do, do you need site plans for this application? Are you before the planning board? Yes, they are. Okay, great. And that, in fact, that leads uh, into your speaker, I think. So. Yes, and, and according to the cheat sheet that you so graciously supplied me, um, it says that um, the ZBA has, it looks like the ZBA, the, the uh, planning board has taken um, lead agency uh, on this for the seeker determination. Does that sound right? Yes. Yes, okay. that's, that's why I was asking. I, I wasn't sure if they had met with the planning board yet, but I knew that they had to eventually. So that's why I was curious. Yeah. But. Yeah, we met right. with the planning board. All, we, had, we had our pre-conference with the planning board and um, are going back to the planning board. So the only okay. thing you should know, I don't think it's gonna impact the timing on this application, but uh, with the planning board being a uh, lead agency, this board won't be able to uh, issue uh, an approval until the planning board's made its seeker determination of significance. Okay, okay. They're usually pretty prompt, so. Yeah. All right. But an application like this, sometimes more complex ones take longer, but this, I don't think it should take too long on this. All right. Very good. Uh, yeah. All we. Right. I, I, I had the understanding it was vice versa. So um, thank you for clarifying that. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the 19th. A referral. Much. Referral. Yeah, uh, referrals. Uh, we have to refer to the planning board. Of course, they're, they're already going to have it. And the uh, WAC, uh, it looks like here uh, as far as referrals. Is that right? Yep. It's, uh, it's located in the LWRP. So. All right. Um, anybody who would like to jump in on this, Catherine, um, we should probably defer you I, on this. I don't know. And, uh, and maybe have, uh, Tim Allenbrook, do you, would you like to take a look at this or Tim Economopoly? One of the two Tims? I'll do it. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the relief is palpable. Well, I didn't get to, um, That's right. Okay, that brings us to the um, uh, the Herm application, and I see that uh, Mr. Herm is is present. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Good, and you are unmuted. Great. Okay, um, you've seen the other applications and and seen basically what we're going through here. So I, again, it's just what we're here to do is just uh, review your application, which we reviewed. Um, uh, listen to you tell us about it and uh, determine whether we have enough information to accept it and go forward and schedule a public hearing. So uh, with that said, take it away. If you could just uh, give us an idea of what uh, you propose. Sure. Uh, we're putting in a, uh, we're proposing to put in uh, a small micro hydro generator, um, which is on the old Wilderstein Dam on our property that we um, co-own with um, uh, Mench Grant Grassmere. And the uh, turbine generator is going to be sized to power um, uh, just our house. We're not going to be connecting it to the grid. Um, and the uh, turbine, because it's so small, the turbine generator does not need a, a, a powerhouse. So it's just going to be out in the open, um, uh, connected, bolted right on to the existing uh, low level outlet that's uh, in the dam. And uh, the water coming out of the turbine generator will flow right back in to the uh, downstream tow of the spillway essentially. Um, but the property line is right at the, where the turbine generator is going to be. So obviously we need a rear yard uh, variance, uh, setback variance on that. And then there's a, a small control panel um, that will be uh, up 
on top of the bank uh, to keep it out of the water, obviously. And uh, we need the electronics that are going to be controlling the turbine generator uh, drive force. And that will be, uh, um, you know, a little under 30 feet uh, from the uh, rear yard as well. So those are the two variances that we need, one for the generator and one for the control panel. Okay. And I did send some photos uh, earlier this morning. I don't know if you had a right. to yep. take a look, but uh, yeah. So um, in this shot, which I took yesterday, um, you can see where we're proposing to put the control cabinet, which has, you know, the little computer and uh, some uh, switches to make sure that the generator runs uh, efficiently and safely. And that's really the only thing that um, uh, the uh, Grassmere people could see if they did come down to this part of the uh, property, but as you can see, it's uh, unbuildable. And so um, um, it's not gonna have a, a neighbor uh, visual impact. And there's a wider shot, I think, on the next slide, perhaps. Yeah. So this is at the property line uh, of Nick and Pritha, uh, who bought uh, Ms. Boucher's property. Um, so it's kind of even hard to see the uh, control cabinet from, from their house, which is further up the hill on this. Um, so that is pretty much it. Uh, do you have any questions? If there was some concern about that visual, uh, it wouldn't be hard to put up a little fence barrier or something that would be maybe more neutral in color. I mean. Uh, sure, that could be uh, done. I'm a little worried about uh, electronics and uh, you know, 220 volts um, with wood. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, the cabinet that I'm showing on the more close-up uh, rendering is a, a NEMA-rated cabinet, which you know is waterproof and uh, is specifically made for outdoor for electronic out there. Yeah. For being, it, It's physically designed to just be like you have it in the illustration you know, to, to be outside and, and be uncovered. Yeah, you know, to, we, we do need uh, that control panel accessible uh, to uh, be able to be on site, um, you know, to uh, turn off the turbine or to make uh, minor adjustments and what have you. So it, it needs to be close to uh, the, the actual turbine generator, which in this shot, um, you can't really see where it is because it's down uh, in between the the top of the bank, right where you know I put the uh, uh, measurement of twenty eight point six feet that type and yeah. the it's, rear yard. It's, but it's down in that cavity, if you will. Ah, okay. So, how do you get the power from there to the house? Uh, Trenched underground, uh, you know, following you know uh, electrical standards, uh, about two feet uh, deep in conduit. It's a single uh, cable, um, uh, two gauge uh, wire. Now, is that going to be close closer to the property line, or is that going to be? Um, if you go to the uh, site plan uh, on this PDF, actually. You'd have to zoom down in the lower part there. But there you can see the dotted line. That's the path of the underground cable, okay. that, that heavier dotted line. Oh, okay. okay. And it follows a, a walking path that is already existing on the site. And you can see we kept the trench away from the uh, wetland area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so uh, this is a, a totally new installation. There's not any 
uh, electrical generator there today, right? No, um, we uh, got our certificate of occupancy uh, last summer here. So, you know, we, we bought the 10 acres without any structures on it and uh, uh, built, you know, a small one bedroom house and now we're gonna be powering it in a net zero fashion uh, from local generation. Mm -hmm. Joel, I know you addressed this a little bit in the application, but could you talk about um, any noise potential or there's any um, noise generated from the um, the dam or the the uh, generation the hydro um, sure. generator? Yeah, actually, uh, Nick and Kretha uh, on our during our uh, site plan public hearing um, last month, they said one of the reasons they bought the property next to us uh, was because of the nice sound of the uh, spillway. And right at the spillway on the dam, uh, uh, it runs about 90 decibels. Uh, but at the property line between us and uh, that, we, that we share with Nick and Krista, it drops down to 50 decibels, which is uh, well, we're right at the uh, town uh, noise code, because this is a, obviously a constant 24 seven, 365 days, uh, 50 decibels at their property line. Um, the, the, the generator implementation won't change that one way or the other, right? Uh, if you could hear the difference, I would give you a million dollars because the-, the well, I'll, be right, I'll be right over there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we'll have a DBA meter uh, to okay. prove that. Uh, but you know, the the turbine manufacturer, it's a company out of Ohio, uh, so U.S. made uh, uh, machinery. Um, it runs uh, even at full tilt around 45 decibels. So it's um, in the way sound works. It's not arithmetically. Uh, additive. In other words, we wouldn't be at 90 plus 45, but it might be at 91 or 2 at the uh, dam itself. Uh, but I'm, I'm guessing at the property line after we put in the uh, hydro turbine, it might be 50.1 or 50 point, you know, something, something de minimis like that. Hmm. So it'll, it'll be a uh... For someone with a very attuned ear, it would be a change in the quality of the sound, but not the volume. It's really pretty quiet. It's more like a, a you know, very consistent hum mm, yeah. at, 40, at 40, 45 decibels, which frankly, you know, the, the variability of the water going over the spillway is much more dynamic and uh, you know, your ear is going to pick up that change in the, the water uh, noise modulation, if you will, than, you know, this very consistent 60-cycle uh, hum of uh, basically the, the generator, actually, is so what's making uh, most of the 45 decibels. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, uh, comments? No. A uh, very uh, unique application. I don't think I've seen anything like this in 18 years on the board. So it's uh, kind of cool. We're, we're pretty excited because I think this would be one of the first uh, net zero houses, uh, housing stock in, in Rhinebeck. So I think that would be really good to kind of promote Rhinebeck as a leader in uh, renewable energy. And, but more importantly, um, you know, Decarbonizing the grid is where we need to be to uh, combat uh, climate change. Okay, any, uh, anything else from the board members? No. Okay, I think the application is pretty complete and uh, thank you for the explanation and thank you for uh, answering the questions about noise and things like that. Um, um, uh, so at this point in time, again, uh, I would make a motion to accept the application. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, uh, Tim Economoli? Yes. Me, yes. Tim Allenbrook? Yes. 
And Catherine Clark. Yes. All right, uh, Mr. Herm, uh, you've heard that our next meeting is uh, May 19th. And uh, we'll, uh, I, I may, I'll make a motion that we, we set this up for a public hearing on the, uh, May 19th. Um, do, do I have a, um, it, well, first of all, before I make that motion, is that a, a good date for you? Can you make it? Uh, we will be there. Absolutely. Okay. All right, then I make a motion that we, um, uh, since we've accepted it, we set it up for a public hearing on uh, May 19th. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Tim Economopoli. Yes. Me, yes. Tim Allenbrook. Yes. And Catherine Clark. Yes. All right. So uh, we're on for the 19th. And again, your neighbors will be uh, notified about this and uh, be allowed to come uh, and give comment and ask questions. And, and it's very similar to the format of tonight. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time and your consideration. Really, really appreciate everything you guys do. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, and thank you for your application. Yeah. All right, uh, referrals, uh, it's to the planning board. They already have it, but it's to the planning board. And by the way, before I get to that secret, it looks like they already made the determination it's a type two. Yes, if I'm uh, reading at this the, right. it looks like at the March 1st meeting, they already made it type two, so we're yeah, good. So that's taken sure. care of, we're good. Um, and then um, uh, the WAC, the yep. referral off to, over to them. And then uh, the last thing is we just need to have somebody willing, ah! Catherine Clark had her hand up first. Okay. Bring your desk meter and uh, I'll, <laughs> I, I will. Uh, <laughs> she wants that, she wants Mr. Dollars. Herm, she wants that million bucks. <laughs> For a million dollars, I'll have a really good one. <laughs> she, she, she's gonna be lurking around your property probably. So anyway, all right, we'll see you on the 19th. Catherine. So much. Catherine. Yeah. Uh, it's Tim here. Would you let me know when you're going on a site visit? Oh, absolutely. I'll let everybody know. Yeah. Okay. No, and this that, is a really interesting one. Yeah. All right. Uh, and that brings us, I believe, to our first public hearing, which is Mike's tree service. And is Mr. Graminski about? I see him lurking in the back. Yes, there. I'm here uh, with Seth Dickel. Okay. Is there anybody from the public, anybody else um, interested in this application? All right. Well, maybe somebody will pop up. So, uh, Mark, why don't you uh, or whoever uh, take it away and, and explain the application again to us? Yeah, I'll have Seth go through. Uh, Scott, well, I'll Seth just take quickly through the uh, uh, you know, our original presentation uh, to, to the board. And then um, we also submitted some uh, additions, um, you know, uh, based on our uh, meeting with the planning board. Uh, there were a few minor changes, and then we uh, provided those uh, changes to the zoning board. Just, just some minor changes on the site. But I'll let Seth start with a overall um, uh, presentation and description of the project. Uh, good evening, uh, Seth Stickle with Mark Kraminski um, here tonight to um, speak about uh, MRD Tree Services. Uh, uh, they are looking to develop a uh, currently a vacant lot, 0 0.995 acres. Uh, the lot is located on the west side of Route 9. Um, for anyone who's unfamiliar with lots, approximately across from the Williams Lumber site. Um, the property is looking to be developed with a single building. Uh, the building is proposed with two uses. The uses are uh, Mike's Tree Service, which is a, um, a, a tree service company that does all sorts of uh, tree pruning and, and uh, things of that nature. Uh, this uh, site will be used for the storage of his vehicles um, and they will uh, come in during the day and leave to job sites and come back in the evening. Um, they, this is also a place where he can manage those employees. Um, the, there is a uh, approximately a 1,000 square foot leasable tenant space on the bottom floor um, that will be a, an accessory use to, to Mike's Tree Service and that is a proposed uh, professional uh, um, uh, business or an office. Um, just to walk through the site plan uh, briefly, uh, the building is, a, is an approximately, I think it's a 3,000 or plus or minus square foot, 3,500 foot square foot footprint. Um, 
The idea here for the site plan layout would be to enter through a, a New York State DOT approved minor commercial entrance. Uh, we are working with the DOT on the approval of that entrance. Uh, come in through the site immediately, the people who would be using the office or the professional business space would be parking in the first six spaces that you see, entering through the very front of the building, uh, underneath the covered porch where the main entrance for that office space would be. Anyone who's working with Mike's tree service or uh, Mike himself and would be traveling through this area towards the rear, uh, where uh, in that location, you'll see several spaces towards the Western property boundary. Those are longer spaces elongated so that they were uh, able to accommodate the larger vehicles, trucks and trailers that he has, as well as parking spaces on the south and the southeast uh, uh, corner where uh, individual uh, personal vehicles will be able to park. Um, in the uh, most uh, southwest corner, we are proposing a sanitary disposal system. Um, we are working with uh, Dutchess County Health Department on approval of that sanitary disposal system. Um, they are also proposing a small 18 by 18 shed for storage of uh, uh, equipment and materials. Um, uh, one of the, a couple of things that I would like to note, this is the uh, updated plan that you're, that you're currently looking at. This is a little different from what we looked at last time. I would like to just point out those changes. Uh, the changes that have uh, occurred are um, minor. It's mostly that uh, we uh, changed the fence type. Originally, it was a, a chain link fence. We're now going with a dog-eared uh, wooden fence. It's not a privacy fence. It will have a gap between them as required uh, so that it... Um, but we feel that it will help buffer the visual impact of any uh, vehicles that might be parked. Um, additionally, we are planning landscaping on both the uh, southeast corner uh, where the fence line is to screen the fencing, uh, as well as the sort of north central portion of the property along the fence line there. Um, uh, stormwater is, is managed uh, as, uh, uh, kind of passively using uh, rain gardens. So we're directing all of the surface runoff towards these uh, landscaped uh, sort of uh, depressed areas where we are able to control it and treat it before it leaves the site. Uh, and um, well, uh, the proposed sign for the, uh, for the building is, is single-sided uh, conforming to sign standards um, and located in the front just towards the north side of the building. Um, uh, I'm not sure if uh, the gentleman from Masrelli would like to, um, architects would like to just speak about the architecture. I certainly can if he's not here this evening. Um, but if, if he's with us, Steve, um, please feel free to jump in. Um, the, the, we had presented to you at the last meeting, we happened to have both of the different concepts for what the architecture would look like for this project. Seth, I am here. Okay, great, Steve. Uh, feel All free right. to come at any time, yeah. Okay, so as the, uh, the, the rendering, we added the additional rake board to make it look more like a barn. Uh, the planning board's comments, they thought it looked a little too Adirondack, Adirondack y originally. So we eliminated the brackets on the building. We eliminated what's called a flying gable, which is the, the peak was actually sticking out further than the, the, uh, uh, soffits or the rake board at the walls. Um, we eliminated that. So now it's just one continuous overhang that's, you know, 15 inches overhang. And then we added those additional pieces to make it look, to give it the look and appearance of a barn from the street. Other than that, um, we eliminated some horizontal siding and the planning board did ask us to remove the stone base uh, at the bottom of the building. So uh, that is something that we are going to do and, um, and that will be done on, on the final working drawings. I don't know that we're gonna be providing an additional rendering without it. Uh, they were happy with it, uh, other than the comment of removing the stone base and my client agreed to do so. So um, that was the extent of it. I like the stone base, but <laughs> you know. That's not, that's, that's not my job. Correct. To each his own. Uh, my client liked it. The planning board didn't, and we really want to get this project moving. So I understand, and and um, as I've said before, reasonable minds can differ. Correct. Correct. So, um, so I think I think, it, I think it looks sharp the way you know the way it is in the rendering that's up right now. Yeah. And so, by the way, I did 
I did appreciate the uh, fact that you showed the vegetation, you showed the new fence, and then lurking behind that, we can get an idea of uh, to what degree we can see the uh, the trucks that Correct. are. Correct, Scott. There's I was just out. I was just going to mention that we added the trucks. We have the the appropriate fence, um, so uh, it really does give you the you know the appearance of, of yep. what's really going to happen. Yeah. No, I appreciated that because uh, you know you, you know you're going to see parts of it. We just it, it, um, it's just nice to see what is what it's going to be like. So Correct. I know it's already staked out too. So. Uh, because I've driven by it several times. Uh, so I appreciate that as well. Yes. Uh, excellent. Uh, so just to, to come full circle, uh, we're in front of this board uh, because we uh, the set setback for the build in this zone is 60 feet. And we are requesting, uh, I believe it is 45, 45.3 feet. So we are requesting a 14.7 foot variance from front yeah. yard. Um, additionally, uh, the planning board at our last meeting um, uh, was about to present a resolution, uh, but decided that they would uh, hold off uh, as protocol to uh, wait for the zoning board determination before they were doing that. But they were in the position to move forward. Um, so I just thought that was important to share with, the, with this board. Uh, and and I, I know uh, from just knowing the area very well that um, where you want to situate this is consistent with the other buildings in the area. Um, any idea uh, approximately where, you know, like some of the other buildings in the area, how close they are to the roadway? I mean, I, I know this is pretty consistent with what is up and down that corridor, but just, just a. Absolutely. I'm not sure if it's uh, readily available, but in our previous submission um, on the final sheet, which is uh, sheet six, uh, in the updated. Uh, oh, here. Ah. Here it is, perfect. There it is. Yeah. So what we had done is presented exactly what you're asking for. Maybe we can yeah. zoom in a little bit. And we took a look at uh, all of the buildings that are, you know, um, in a reasonable distance throughout this corridor. Um, and uh, there are some summary tables actually just below, uh, just below that uh, drawing. And those summary tables uh, identify. Uh, the lots that do not have buildings. So there are four of those in what is about, let me see, four, six, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 lots that we looked at. Um, and so four of them do not have buildings. There are, uh, looks one, two, three. There are six um, that have a front yard setback that is greater than 60 feet. Uh, it's notable that most of those are substantially greater, 100, 100 feet or 100 or more. Uh, and then there are eight, I believe, eight. Um, eight uh, properties that have a setback that is less than 60 feet. And the average of the uh, properties um, that are less than 60 feet uh, is about 44 uh, feet. So uh, we're asking for 45.3. Um, and the average setback for the properties that are greater than 60 feet is over 100 feet. So there, there's, there seems to be a dividing here between 100 foot setback and less than 60 foot setback. Um, I hope okay. Question? Yeah. Uh, any of the board members have any questions, concerns, comments? <clears throat> I, I just want to say that that sheet six is probably the best comparison graphic that we've ever had um, to show what the, you know, uh, what conditions are in the vicinity. Um, so that's something to remember um, yeah. going forward. Because that's a really nice presentation. And it's a very important uh, component of our consideration. So, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I knew it wasn't an original idea on my part. I must have had it in the back of my mind um, from when we first saw the application. But it's, I'm glad uh, you, you brought us, this to my attention again, because it is, I agree with John, it's uh, excellent information. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, last call. Any any uh, public 
I don't well, see any problem. Who's writing this one up? Huh? I am. Oh, you are. Okay. Yes. Busy. I pick the easy ones with one variance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Questions, concerns? All right. Since I don't hear any, um, at this point in time, uh, I would make a motion that we close the uh, public hearing. Do I have a second? I'll second, Tim. Okay. Um, Tim Akinopoli? Yes. Me, yes. Catherine Clark? Yes. And Mr. Allenbrook? Yes. All right, so we've closed the uh, public hearing. That means that we have 62 days from today to render a resolution. We will do it before then. In fact, there'll be a resolution on this uh, on May 19th, because I'm going to write it, and um, uh, it's a you know, reasonably uh, simple application. So I will definitely have it available. You don't have to be here, um, but if you have nothing better to do on a Wednesday night, um, <laughs> I pity you. Uh, but you can also uh, you can come and um, uh, and listen to the resolution. But I'll de well, I'll definitely have it done uh, by the 19th of May. Thank and you, uh, thank you for the extra information uh, and 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 the renderings. That was that was really good. Yeah, thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah, you too. Good night. Good night. All right. On to Dells. Ah, uh, Dells. Is there somebody here for Dells? No. Nope. nope. Nobody. In the, nobody's in the waiting room either. Hmm. Shoot. Chris, did any any um, communications from from Van? Kim, you're, you're, you're muted. Yeah. Yep. Chris, you're muted. I was just <laughs> trying to say that and I was muted. <laughs> um, I sent them the agenda and the Zoom invite post, but I haven't heard anything directly. I can um, call uh, Tom really quick and see if I can get a hold of him. Uh, do you want to do that? I was just gonna, the public hearing notice was posted, correct? Yes. So maybe you could do that. In the meantime, we can read the resolution. And give oh, him a shot for, to get on for Solon. Yeah. Yeah. Does just, that uh, sound like a reasonable way to proceed? And I, I'd hate to have to put it over another month without them. Well, being I don't know if you well. really have to. If you know, if the public hearing notice was posted, um, you know, we can still open the public hearing, and, and, and I can I can put on the the drawing. Um, you know, I can just, for the record, explain what, what it is. But I, I think as long as the public hearing notice was posted, uh, we should proceed. Okay. If, I, if, you, I, if you would, I like, Van, if you would yeah. like Van to be on to explain it, um, it, I don't necessarily think it's required because it's a fairly straightforward application. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. It's a very straightforward application. I've just never... I've and never we seen had it explained to us two, two months running, so... Yeah. I have no quarrel going forward. If you think we can do it without the applicant being here, I have no problem, you know, going forward. Yeah, I agree. I, I think Kim, actually Kim's worked hard on this. I think she can give you, uh, give the public a decent uh, explanation, but, okay. um, you know. No, let's, let's do it then. Um, so basically this is, everyone is uh, familiar, uh, most likely everyone is familiar with the Dell's Dairy Cream. Um, uh, property. It's along Route 9, fairly close to where Mike's Tree Service is proposed. And this is the current sign. And they want to uh, change their name to Dell's Roadside. And they've taken off the ice cream cone. Um, they changed their uh, plans so that they now have uh, overhanging lights because the existing lights were up up lighting, which isn't allowed. So they did uh, change that to be complying with the uh, overhang light. And they also have a wear open, wear closed sign. Um, and uh, I did speak to um, Michelle uh, Turk while she was here. And um, we have adjusted the initial variance for the sign, um, which includes now the Dell's road sign and the wear open, wear closed um, under the Town of Rhinebeck, um, 
there sh it sh the sign should uh, be 12 square feet in surface area with a maximum total signage of 30 square feet. Um, the sign for Dell's changing slightly the design and, and the name really doesn't change much with what the sign is currently there, except for those changes with the design. So the um, to make it into compliant, the requested variance is for a uh, have a 66 67.6 square foot total sign. So the variance requested is 55.6 square feet. The uh, height of the row of the sign will not be changing, but again, because changes are being made, we have to make sure they're in compliance. So uh, six feet is the requirement for signs in this area. The sign is at 12 feet, two inches. So the variance requested is six foot, two inches, but again, it's not changing from the current size and height that's um, currently there. And additionally, there is a requirement that signs not be located more than uh, closer than 20 feet to the property line. Um, this sign is three feet from the property line. Again, it's already in existence. Um, so the location will not change, but again, because changes are being made, that's why this effect um, variance is also required. Okay. So that's a variance of 17 feet. Yes. Thank yes. You. Yep. Okay. Now, this went through planning board again, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Board. So it doesn't really go through planning board. I'm not sure, Chris, maybe you can explain the uh, referral that we got um, from them today, it it basically did say they had no problems with it, but um, I'm not sure exactly why they gave us another one. But this one said had different language on it in the sense that it didn't require plantings and things like that. Yes, I did notice that it didn't have that. So is that the case? I guess that's the case then, huh? Uh, yeah, I, 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 again, I'm not sure exactly why they provided an update, but I would take it as an update and um, I guess they're not concerned with it. Now, yeah. clearly, because they say that the sign design is appropriate for the location, which I agree. Yeah. And um, it's certainly consistent with everything in the area. Um, and I think we were waiting on one thing from, from DOT, correct? Or did that go through? I thought I saw that. I didn't see it. Um, did you see that, Kim? I might be getting it mixed up with something else. I saw that the planning board had mentioned something about DOT. Yeah, I don't they know did. what was I don't know what um, was done about that though. Yeah, I didn't see anything from DOT. It, it was mentioned in the um, planning board, uh, planning board uh, document we got uh, today. Uh, that was the well, it's, it's number two. It should be number three. Um, but. Uh, I, I have no uh, problem with this uh, application whatsoever. Um, uh, the, the sign is certainly appropriate. I think it's uh, probably an improvement, even though I like the ice cream cone. That's my own personal opinion. Uh, but um, no, it, it's a it's a good looking sign. I just huh? want to know where the ice cream cone is going. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, I I. Um, I don't have any questions, concerns, and. Uh, Can I just type in just for a moment? Yes, please. Um, I was able to get a hold of Tom, the manager, um, so he should be popping in any moment. Okay. Uh, the planning board referral you're re 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 uh, referring to, the original uh, document received was the zoning administrat administration's referral to the planning board. The one that we got back was um, the one that I sent the, the ch all with all the changes and everything to the planning board um, when I received the updated site uh, sign uh, rendering. So that's what that response. Okay, thank you, Chris. So the, the one that we received from February 18th was the initial, re the initial design and then the one we just received was based on this design that's up in front of us. Yeah, the, the first one was the ZA's referral to the planning board. The second one was our referral to the planning board. Okay. 
ZBA. And and then the one that we just got was for this particular one in front of us now. Right. Yes, exactly. Yes. Great. Thank you. It was their referral response to our referral. And I think uh, Dutchess County Planning Board also responded and said it was a matter of local concern, so they had no. Yeah. Um, oh, that, that's what I saw. That's what I was thinking of. Where is that document? The it was sent. Um, you should have received it on April sixth. April fifth. Six. I can resend it if you need. Yes, please. Absolutely. Yep, it was transmitted April sixth. I'm looking at it right now. All right. Anybody have any um, questions, concerns? I guess we can wait. I think ah, there he is. Hey, Tom. You're, you're muted. muted. He's not muted. It's his, <coughs> it's oh, his okay. microphone on his ear and his ear pod things. Oh. Need some. Yeah, I think there would be exactly like that. Let me see. I might be able to just do it with the. Uh, we can hear you. We can hear you now. Oh, great. We can hear you. <laughs> yeah, I unplugged the headphones. So, yep. That works. Who needs headphones? So, um, just to bring you up to speed, Tom, we, we've been discussing the application. Kim has gone uh, through uh, the application and um, I don't have any questions or concerns. I don't know if any of the board members do. No. No. Uh, um, looks, looks good. Yep. I, I guess, do we need to um, refer, get it a deal? So I, I have the planning board referral up. It says recommends that zoning board ensures DOT region does not have any concerns. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, do we circulate this to DOT or should we? We, we, we haven't done it with other signs in the area, have we? No. I don't no. think I don't we have. I don't remember had. doing this. No, like for the art of building and all that kind of stuff. I don't think we've ever done anything like that. I, I don't know. It's not a required referral. I understand what the concern is, but uh, I don't think that that needs to be done here. Uh, we can talk to the planning board about that, but and I would say in addition to that, given the fact that this sign is already in a location that it's been for years and years and years. Uh, I just don't see the utility uh, in that unless the board members disagree with me. I no. think you, you have all the information that you need to make a decision on the variance without yep. additional input. I agree, absolutely. All right, and with that, um, I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, Tim Economopoli? Yes. Me, yes. Tim Allenbrook? Yep. Catherine? Yes. All right, uh, Tom, that means we've closed the public hearing. Uh, we have uh, 62 days in order to render a resolution, but Tim Economopoli is very efficient and I'm confident he will have a resolution by the next meeting of yep. May 19th. That's our next meeting. Yep. Uh, we typically get it done at the next meeting. So I'm, I'm sure that's gonna happen here. Uh, you do not have to attend, but as I told the last applicant, if you have nothing better to do on a Wednesday night, uh, you can visit us and listen to the resolution being read. Well, I'll be there. Okay. Hey, so it's hey guys, if I can pop in for a second, this is Van. Hey Van. Uh, Sorry, I wasn't there earlier. I was on a uh, Red Hook Response was having a, a similar meeting um, and I'm part of that organization. So uh, I, I just want to, I'm sure that whatever we've gone through, Tom can update me on. I just didn't want you to think that I was an absentee uh, person in the process. So um, nothing to add because I missed the meeting. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that I, I was in the Red Hook Response same similar Zoom meeting. Um, and that's why I wasn't here going through it with you. So my apologies. Um, and I'm sure Tom can update me tomorrow on whatever's uh, going forward and whatever we need to do. 
You are officially forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> and the good news uh, is there's nothing for you to do. So I love that even more. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. Well, um, I think that takes care of that. And the last thing is just to read the um, uh, Solon resolution. I have it. A... You got Tom, it? Tom and Van, you guys are free to go. Sweet. Right, thank you. All right, Catherine, take it away. Okay. Uh, resolution of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Board of Appeals in the matter of the area variance application of D. Solon for the Solon Family Trust, ZBA case number 1008. Uh, background uh, The applicant is D. Solon, Solon Family Trust. D. Solon is acting as her own representative. Property involved This appeal involves property property located at 111 Way Road in the town of Rhinebeck and which bears the tax parcel number 12508962710014517. The applicant's property is three acres in area and is located in the RC5 zoning district. Uh, description of the project. The applicant proposes to install an in-ground swimming pool 12 feet by 32 feet with five foot depth at the deepest part. The house is located 51 feet from the rear property lines and the proposed pool would be installed eight feet from the rear property lines. This would set the pool 30 feet from the house positioned just beyond the shadow of the house. Section 12527A to B of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Code requires 30 feet rear yard setback for accessory structures. The application therefore requires one variance. Uh, variance one, a variance of 22 feet for the rear yard setback of an accessory structure. Uh, ZBA review, timeliness of appeal. The applicant filed an appeal with this board on February 1, 2021 and has paid the requisite fee. The appeal was filed within 60 days of the date of the ZEO's determination letter, which is being appealed, dated January 12, 2021. And thus the application is timely as required by section 125125B of the town of Rhinebeck zoning law. This application was accepted by this board on February 17th, 2021 and deemed complete subject to the applicant's submission of fence and landscape renderings. Such renderings were received on February 24th, 2021. Secret, this application is deemed as a type two action under secret granting of individual setback and lot line variations and adjustments. Referrals and responses. Uh, the application was referred to the town of Rhinebeck planning board following the ZBA acceptance of the application is complete. The town of Rhinebeck planning board responded on March 17th, 2021 with a number of questions and items for consideration. In summary, the planning board suggested that a location closer to the house be considered and requested that additional plantings be proposed between the pool and the property to the north. This recommendation was based on the fact that the adjacent property to the rear and thereby close to the pool may be developed in the future. The planning board also asked that the plans indicate any patio or impervious area the location of mechanicals and any pool drainage that would be required. Overall, the planning board recommended that the ZBA rely on its own study of the facts in accordance with the criteria and procedures set forth in the town code chapter 125 attachment three, including input of neighboring property owners. The ZBA addressed these questions with the applicant at the ZBA meeting held on March 17th, 2021 the applicant stated there was no planned patio and provided um, a landscape plan with magnolia trees, existing viburnum, hedge on uh, inner side of the fence and lilac bushes planted, planned to be planted in the spring. Let me just mark one knit that I caught. Um, Additionally, the applicant stated that the pool mechanicals would be placed in an area with the air conditioning unit, which was already in a shed and screened. The applicant also noted that she spoke with Conklin Pools and the pool will utilize a filter system so there would be no drainage or backwash required of the pool. 
public hearing. A public hearing on this appeal was duly advertised and held on March 17th, 2021. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the public hearing was held virtually pursuant to New York State Executive Order 202.1 which suspended certain provisions of the open meetings law to allow a municipal board to convene meetings during the current pandemic via video conferencing and or telephone conferencing. The public was thus afforded the opportunity to view and participate during this public hearing remotely. There was no input received either prior to or during the public hearing from members of the public. The public hearing was closed on March 17th, 2021. Uh, site visit. On March 21, uh, 2021, ZBA members Scott Bergen, Timothy Economopoli, and Catherine Clark visited the applicant's property and the surrounding neighborhood to observe firsthand on-site conditions, property characteristics, settings, surrounding environment, and the character of the surrounding neighborhood. Findings of fact and conclusions of law. Balancing test. In our review of the variance site, we have considered the benefit to the applicant applicant if the area of variance is granted as weighed against the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community by such grant. We determine that the variance requested should be granted because there is no perceived detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community by the granting of the variance. <clears throat> Consideration of five factors in balancing test. In our determination, we have considered the five factors required by section 125124C1 of the Town of Rhinebeck zoning law as follows. If the variance is granted, will it cause an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or cause a detriment to nearby, nearby properties? We find the answer to this question is no. The properties along Way Road provide significant distance between most of the houses. And although there are a number of properties that might eventually be subdivided, the current five acre zoning will continue to provide space for privacy between homes. The setting proposed for the pool, along with its size, provide privacy from the road and other houses. The proposed landscaping on the north side will provide a buffer to any future development to the north. The landscaping includes eight six foot tall lilac bushes directly behind the pool and a viburnum hedge all along the north side, which will provide a visual buffer to the adjacent property to the rear. The current property to the rear is approximately 34 acres. There are currently no houses that are directly be behind the applicant's house. However, even if the adjacent property in the rear were to be developed, the lilac bushes and the viburnum hedge will provide privacy and a visual buffer to any potential development that may exist in the future. Additionally, the mechanicals for the pool will be located within an existing structure, which alleviates the need for additional buildings or structures visible above ground. Overall, the project will have very little, if any, visual impact on the neighborhood. Fencing will be a four-foot split rail with wire to achieve code and is in keeping with the rural nature of the area. Flagstone will be installed around the pool, but there will be no additional patio area created. Can the benefit sought by the applicant be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than this area of variance? Uh, we find the answer to this question is no. The applicant has stated three goals for the pool, to be shielded as much as possible from the road, be easily accessible from, accessed from the house, and to be placed just beyond the shadow of the house itself. Given the position of the house and existing infrastructure, including a gas line to the east of the house, a variance would be required for virtually any location behind the house. Is the requested area variance substantial? We find the answer to this question is yes, in terms of the numerical amount of the variance requested, as the request is for an eight foot setback for the pool versus the 30 foot required by the zoning code. However, in terms of the impact on the neighborhood, it is not substan substantial given the topography of this and the neighboring property. Will the proposed variance have an adverse impact on physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? We find the answer to this question is no. As mentioned above, there is significant open space along Way Road. The installation of the pool discreetly behind the house will have little impact on the neighborhood. 
The pool will have a filtering system that does not require back flushing of the pool. Overall, it will enhance the value of the property with no impact to neighbors. Is the alleged difficulty self-created? We find the answer to this question is yes, as the applicant could forego installation of a pool in that location. In addition, the applicant chose to locate the house as far back from the road as possible, limiting the options for accessory structures within allowed setbacks. But the pool would then be in the shadow and shade of the house, which is not an ideal location for a swimming pool. Having said that, the topography and infrastructure that are already in place would make any location not requiring a variance uh, less desirable, far more expensive, and it would have a greater impact on the neighborhood. Uh, minimal variance requested. In addition to our review of the five factors and balancing test, we must also determine if this requested variance is the minimum variance necessary and adequate to accomplish what is requested by the applicant. We find the answer to this question is no. Even if the pool could be located somewhat closer to, house, to the house, there are gas lines 10 feet from the house and two specimen trees 14 feet from the house that would limit how much it could move to the southwest and any movement would bring it within the shadow of the house for much of the season. Uh, now therefore be it resolved based on all the facts described above and upon the reasoning described above as follows. The ZBA hereby grants the variance requested by the applicant finding that the benefit to the applicant outweighs the detriment to the health, safety and welfare of the neighborhood or community by such a grant. As discussed above, given the position of the house and existing infrastructure, including a gas line to the east of the house, a variance would be required for virtually any location behind the house. The proposed location will leave the front of the property a long way road uh, left open with no change. The pool is discreetly located behind the house for minimal visual impact. The plantings behind the pool will provide a barrier to the Northeast should there be a future subdivision of that property. Uh, the granting of this variance is expressly contingent upon the following. One, that the installation for the pool and flagstone conform, conforms to the proposal, including all fencing, the housing of mechanicals, and the planting of lilacs and viburnum as described in the landscaping plan. Two, the plantings are to be properly maintained and kept in good condition during the growing season. Three, the fence is to be kept in good condition and repair. Section three, the granting of this variant shall also be expressly contingent upon the applicant's full payment to the town of Rhinebeck of any and all fees and escrow deposits due in connection with this application in full compliance with article uh, 14, fee reimbursement of the town of Rhinebeck zoning law. This variant shall not be deemed valid until all such fees are paid in full by the applicant. <clears throat> Section four, the granting of this variance does not absolve the applicant from having to secure any other required permits and or approvals. The proposed pool must be constructed in conformity with the application and plan submitted. Um, the area of variance shall be null and void unless the proposed construction is commenced with the, within one year of this resolution. Discussion, uh, questions? No, I thought it was very well done. And uh, in particular, that uh, site visit, I think made it clear, at least to me, that really that is the only place to put the pool. Um, no other place makes sense. She is, you know, confined um, uh, to put it there because of, you know, there's so, there's, there's so little backyard. There's nothing, you know, in back of that, of their property. I mean, there's literally nothing. Uh, there's vacant land as far as the eye can see. And um, it just um, it just made sense to me. I, it's not going to have any impact on the neighborhood. You're not going to see it from the roadway, no way. Um, and um, I, I, I'm all for the uh, the resolution. That's just my comment. Yeah. Any other? Same here. I thought uh, that was really the only place that she could put it. Either that or totally shaded. Um, well, or, or put it to the east down that slope, and then it'd be out in the middle of nowhere and have right. far be a lot more expensive and have a really negative impact, I think, on the on the neighborhood, or more of a neg negative impact. Um, 
And I think the plans that she has in terms of landscaping, she's obviously been sensitive with those magnolia trees and things there. I think it'll be very nice. Well, if she builds this uh, with the, uh, <laughs> the same way she's built the house there and the, the, the same way the barn's been redone, it's, it's gonna be fabulous. I mean, the, the barn was, was top shelf and the house is beautiful and, and uh, you know, she did a really nice job with those things. So I presume that this is going to be built the same way and it's just going to be, um, you know, kind of fabulous actually. Yeah. Um, so do we, uh, should I make a motion? You should make a motion. I make a motion that we uh, accept this resolution. Oh, there was one, uh, Chris, on the paragraph just above number seven, um, I left out the word plan. It should be landscape plan with magnolia trees existing by Burnham Hedges. Got it. That's the only thing I saw that really needed changing. Did anybody else see any edits that? No. Okay. Uh, then I, uh, I propose that we accept uh, the resolution as written with that one change. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Look, Chris. Chris. Hall. Yeah. Scott Bergen. Yes. Catherine Clark. Yes. Tim McAnopoly. Yes. And Tim Allenbrook. Yes. Great. All right. That is uh, everything that's on the agenda. Anybody have anything they need to discuss? Otherwise, I will make a motion to adjourn. So I have a second. All right. All right. All in favor? Obviously, everybody. Aye. Um, aye. Great. Great. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, thank Kim, you, everyone. Yeah, thank Kim you, and John. Fred. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Fred. Uh, Kim and John, thank just thanks guys. again for um, all the help, especially on the first couple of applications, which needed a lot of your work that to get them so that we could accept them. So I wanted to just say that. Absolutely. Guys. Amazing grid. Great. And, <laughs> and of course, Thank thanks you. to our great clerk. Uh, so we'll see everybody oh, on the 19th. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank be you. safe. See you later.